Namaste. And now for the exciting conclusion, <laughs> we're going to talk about Stai Bhava. Stai Bhava is the steady ecstasy or the emotional tone of the relationship between the devotee and the Ishta Devata. And now remember, <clears throat> the Ishta Devata can be any form of God. From Brahman to Shiva to Shakti to any of the incarnations and forms. So it's a matter of personal taste. And this is very important to remember so that we don't offend great devotees whose mood or pastimes are very different from ours. And of course, our social conventions and morality don't apply in this area at all, because this is the transcendental realm. So these uh, temporary uh, material moralities and things like customs and, and so on don't really apply. And <clears throat> one's relationship with the Ishta Devata can be surprisingly different and original. So you have to look into your own heart and see what is it that is uh, the essence of your relationship with God. And this will be revealed by firm practice over many years of the fundamentals of bhakti. So without further ado, let's go to Sri Rasamrita Sindhu. That bhava which, controlling other favorable bhavas such as hasya and contradictory bhavas such as krodha, presides in the manner of an efficient ruler, is called the sthai bhava. In this context, the rati directed towards one's ishta devata is called the sthai bhava. Those knowledgeable of rasa may say that there are two types of sthai bhava, mukha, primary, and gona, secondary. A rati, that is shuddha sattva visheshatma, composed of the hladini and sangvit shaktis, is called a primary rati. Though this is the primary rati, it takes two forms, svarta and parartha. That primary rati that clearly nourishes itself with non-contradictory bhavas and becomes intolerably depressed with sorrow by contradictory bhavas is called the svarta rati, nourishing itself. The same primary rati that, restricting itself, accepts both non-contradictory and contradictory bhavas, which then become prominent, is called parartha, nourishing the other bhavas. A primary rati in these two forms has five varieties, shuddha, priti or dasya, sakya, vatsalya, and priyata or madhurya. The rati takes on a specific type, one of the five, according to the individual nature of the devotee. Just as the sun takes on various forms when reflected through crystals and other items, the rati takes on various forms when manifesting in different individuals. So first of all, we have to understand what is our primary rati? What is our primary bhava or mood towards the Ishta Devata? And <clears throat> this mood can be one of two types. Either it can be nourished by the favorable and unfavorable bhavas, the temporary tastes that come and go in the form of different bhavas, or it can be oppressed by them. So whether the, the primary rati nourishes or is nourished by the secondary ratis determines the type and whether it's really uh, rooted deeply in the individual or whether it's lighter 
and more easily influenced. This was actually dealt with in the previous chapter, but we didn't have time to go over it. That someone with a deep heart, heart of gold, is not so much influenced by the coming and going of various temporary tastes. Whereas someone with a light heart is compared to a pile of feathers. <laughs> Any little breeze that comes along will scatter them. So in the same way, the neophyte devotees are very easily influenced by temporary moods, whereas the realized devotees, even though having to face many contradictory moods, are never shaken in their devotion. Shanti Shudharati Non-differentiation of the knower and the object within the mind is called Shama. It is said by the ancients, that nature by which a person is situated in the bliss of his own Atma, after giving up the pursuit of material things, is called Shama. What ancients are we talking about? Shankaracharya. <laughs> so here we have Rupa Goswami quoting from Shankaracharya and hiding the source. Really now, come on. Let's grow up. It is not that the realization of impersonal Brahman is against bhakti or in conflict with bhakti. It's not. It can be very nourishing. In fact, it can even be a major rasa. And this is called shudharati. Okay, this is shantar rasa, or pure. Huh? And it is actually the base. Just like in the previous verse, the example was given the sunlight refracted through different crystals or other substances, colored glass, for example, can take on different forms and colors. So in the same way, the Shanta Rasa is the basic love of God in, his, in God's basic feature, which is Brahman or Atman, the self. And we've talked about this on this channel many, many, many times. But then... Beyond the attainment of liberation, there are other tastes which can be relished as a pure rati as, or, or as a rasa with the addition of the nourishing bhavas. And we're going to go on and discuss them one by one. That rati arising in persons with a predominance of shama, atma jnana, which is devoid of even a trace of possessiveness for the Lord, but which produces attraction for the Lord in the form of Paramatma, is called Shantarati. Why isn't there even a trace of possessiveness? Because the Lord is not seen as different from one's own self. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. And so this is the basic rasa, compared to white light, which is then refracted or reflected in different ways according to the nature of the individual. And some of these ways are described herein. Pritirati. When persons identify themselves as inferior to the Lord, they are called the recipients of mercy, anugraha. Their rati, in which one's ishtadevata is perceived as worthy of worship, is called pritirati. This pritirati produces attachment for the object of worship and destroys affection for other objects. Sakyarati. Those who identify themselves as equal to their ishtadevata are called sakhas or friends. Their rati with familiarity arising from a sense of equality is called sakyarati. In this rati, there is loud laughing, joking, and no sense of reserve. Vatsala rati. Those persons whose rati identifies them as superiors to the Lord are known as puja, worthy of respect, or elders. 
Their rati, which gives mercy to their Ishtadevata, is called vatsalya or vatsala. In this rati, there is protecting, blessing, kissing, and touching one's Ishtadevata. Priyata rati. That rati found in lovers, and which is the root cause of eight types of enjoyment between the lover and the Ishtadevata, is called Priyata Rati. It is also called Madhurya Rati. In this Rati, there are sidelong glances, moving the eyebrows, affectionate words, and slight smiles, etc. These five types of Rati, from Shuddha to Priyata Rati, become progressively more blissful by increasing tastes. The particular taste arises in a devotee according to his previous experiences. So these five types of rati, or rasa, are the five principal rasas. Neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. You might ask, if you don't have much background in this business, how is it that a devotee can consider himself equal to or even superior to the Ishtadevata? And the answer is, because the Ishtadevata is complete in all respects, in all forms of the Lord, there are a multitude of different relationships. Some of these are neutral adoration, like love from afar, and this is Shantaras. Others involve direct servitude, and this is Dasya Rasa, or Priti Rasa. And then some are equal, like friends, like some of the Sakis in the uh, world of Devi are almost equal, exactly reflections of her. So they act as friends and the cowherd boys in Krishna Leela and like that. And then there's Vatsalya, which means parenthood. So even though God is never born, still there are parental relationships with the Ishta Devata because the Ishta Devata is complete in all respects, including taking lovers. So this is seen in Krishna Leela very prominently, but it's also present in other forms. It's just not so well known. It's more esoteric, more confidential. That's all. In Krishna Leela, this aspect was brought out because it's Kali Yuga and everyone is very much attached to sex life. And so as a means of recruiting more devotees and attracting people to Krishna Leela, the conjugal pastimes were made very prominent. But they're there in all Ishta Devatas. So those are the five primary rasas. Now we're going to talk about the seven secondary rasas. When a different emotional state arising from the excellence of the Alamban, Vibhava, manifests with manifests while the primary rati subdues itself, it is called secondary rati. The seven specific emotions are hasa, humor, vismaya, astonishment, utsaha, fortitude, shoka, lamentation, kroda, anger, bhaya, fear, and jugupsa, disgust or hatred. Though these seven bhavas are different from the primary svarta ratis composed of shuddha sattva vishesha, mukya svarta ratis, when these seven emotions are conjoined with a primary rati which takes a secondary role as parartha, the nourishing, the word rati is used to describe the condition of these seven. Therefore, these seven emotional states manifest for a short time in a person and are not fixed in any particular person. Even though these seven emotions manifest spontaneously, they disappear by being converted by contrary bhavas arising from the primary rati. Therefore, it is said, in a devotee, 
one of the five sthai bhavas and the seven secondary bhavas, together making eight bhavas, produce lasting impressions, even though they may externally disappear for some time. Since the impressions of the Vyabhichari bhavas disappear after they are covered by these eight, the Vyabhichari bhavas are not considered to be sthai bhavas. So, for example, we mentioned that in the friendly relationship, there's a lot of laughing and joking. Now, this is a secondary taste, but it is so characteristic of the relationship of friendship that uh, for all practical purposes, it's part of the Sthai Bhava. Now, some of the secondary Rasas and Vyabhichari Bhavas are compatible and some are incompatible. For example, disgust is incompatible with Madhura Rati. You don't find any uh, examples in Shastra of the conjugal devotees of the Lord being overwhelmed by disgust. Hatred, yes, of the Lord's enemies, but never that disgust. So uh, there's a complicated chart at the end of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu about these harmonious and disharmonious relationships of rasa. But I think it's just too much to go into right here. Hasarati. When there is cheerfulness in the heart from irregularity of speech, dress, or actions, it is called hasa. In this state, the symptoms are fully opening the eyes and quivering of the nose, lips, and cheeks. Vismayarati. On seeing something unusual, the mind may inquire, what can this be? This disposition is called vismaya, or wonder. In this state, the symptoms are widening of the eyes, uttering words like, very good, very good, and standing of the hairs on end. The relation of vismaya to vismayarati is the same as hasa to hasarati. In other words, when the secondary rasa is a support of the main rasa, then it becomes part of the main rati or the emotional mood of the devotee. Utsaharati. Firm and immediate attachment of the mind to activities such as battle, charity, compassion, and dharma, whose results are praised by saintly people, is called utsaha. Yuddhadi means fighting, charity, compassion, and righteous acts. Instead of yuddhadi, Svabhishta, cherished, is sometimes used. We see this rati a lot in the pastimes of Devi. If you haven't read it, you should read Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, which details these pastimes over many, many different yugas and planetary systems. It's a wonderful read. Shokarati. Intense pain in the heart arising from a separation from a dear one with thoughts that the beloved has perished is called shoka or lamentation. In this state, there is wailing, falling on the ground, heavy breathing, drying of the mouth, and confusion. Krodarati. Flaming up of the heart from encountering opposition is called kroda or anger. In this state, rough behavior, frowning, and reddening of the eyes manifest. Kroda rati arises from kroda in the same way as hasa rati arises from hasa. It has two types, where the stimulus for kroda is one's ishta devata, and where the stimulus is the enemy of one's ishta devata. Bhaya rati. When the heart manifests extreme unsteadiness after committing an offense or seeing fearsome creatures, it is called bhaya or fear. In this state, the attempt to hide oneself, drying up of the heart, feeling, and confusion manifest. The wise say that bhaya is related to bhaya rati just as hasa is related to hasa rati. As with kroda, bhaya rati has two types. Bhaya, whose cause is one's ishta devata, 
and by a whose cause is the enemy of one's Ishtadevata. Jugupsarati <clears throat> Restriction of the heart arising from experiencing disgusting things is called jugupsa, or disgust. In this state, spitting, curling of the lips, and uttering contemptuous words manifest. When jugupsa appears because of rati, it is called jugupsa rati. This video is getting very long, so I'm going to try to wrap it up quickly. But basically, the difference between ordinary emotions of any type, uh, whether are they're the cause of bhava, the result of bhava, uh, or different contrary and helping tastes, are definitely uh, not mundane at all if they're in relationship with the Ishta Devata. This is the key. So these pastimes taking place in the spiritual world are never mundane, even though they're full of all kinds of varieties of feeling and experience. Because they're in relationship with God in any form, they're purely spiritual. If they remain independent, then the 33 Vyabhichari Bhavas, the eight Ratis mentioned above, and the eight Sattvika Bhavas are called 49 Bhavas or emotional states. These 49 states of mind are completely transcendental to the gunas of matter and are filled with spiritual bliss, being linked to the appearance of one's Ishta Devata. However, it may appear as if some of these states, such as Garva, pride, Harsha, liberation, Supti, sleep, and Hasya, joking, arise from the mode of passion, and others, such as Vishada, despair, Dinata, lowliness, Moha, bewilderment, and Shoka, lamentation, arise from the mode of ignorance. Among the bhavas, it would seem that those such as Harsha are filled with happiness, and others such as Vishada are filled with sorrow. But the astonishing fact is that Rati filled with sorrow is considered to be the highest, most intense bliss. The primary and secondary Ratis produce Vibhavas, Anubhavas, Sattvika Bhavas, and Vyabhichari Bhavas through hearing about experiencing or remembering one's Ishta Devata. All these combine to become rasa in devotees. So, rasa then means the combination of all these different bhavas. And when all the sattvika bhavas are present at the same time, this is Mahabhava. And as you can imagine, the uh, different tastes have innumerable combinations. And so Mahabhava can display an astonishing variety in the different devotees of the Lord in the spiritual world. This has to be experienced to really be understood. And once you experience it, it's a taste like no other, even though it may apparently look like contamination by the material modes of nature, actually it's not at all, because everything is in relationship with Ishta Devata. As yogurt becomes rasala by mixing with other ingredients like sugar and pepper, the two types of rati become rasa by combination with the elements of vibhava, anubhava, sattvika bhava, and vyabhichari bhava. Thus, through that rasa, the devotees directly experience an astonishing, deep bliss arising from realization of one's Ishta Devata and other related things. It has been said, first the ingredients have distinct forms, but when they mix and attain the form of rasa, they assume oneness. However, when pepper and sugar are mixed together in a drink, one can still recognize pepper and sugar. Similarly, in rasa, though vibhava and the other elements become one entity in rasa, they can still be recognized in subtle form. 
So this concludes our meta-analysis of Mahabhava. And taking note of all the pieces that go together and how much their variety is extensive. <laughs> I mean, no one can calculate the possibilities of transcendental rasa. And the peak of that rasa is the Mahabhava, which manifests in the very greatest devotees of the Lord. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.